Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is True Underdog, here today with a full breakdown for every Ninja Turtle. However, you may have noticed that we're not in training mode yet, and that's because I want to show how to actually set up the turtles so you can play with them in training mode. So for starters, each loadout's gonna all have the same weapon. So if you want to play a certain turtle, then you have to change that loadout. So for example, by default we have leading swords in every single loadout. And of course that gives you Leonardo because he's the one who wields dual katanas. If you want to wield a different turtle, then go all the way down where I'm currently selecting and change that to a different weapon. And thankfully they're all unlocked by default. You don't have to level up or unlock them with a loot box, they're already there. In fact, the best thing to actually do is to change all three loadouts that you have by default, so each one has a different weapon. So for loadout 1, I have Leading Swords. For loadout 2, I have the Master's Bow Staff, which is Donatello. And then for loadout 3, I have Party Time Nunchucks, which of course is Michelangelo. Now unfortunately, you don't have all five loadouts by default, so you can't have all four turtles at the ready. You gotta level up a little bit to at least level 10 if you want to have all four turtles at your disposal. Alright, so with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and snap right into training mode through the magic of editing. 3, 2, 1... And here we go, we're in training mode, fantastic. And first up we have Leonardo, and that's because I have him set to loadout 1. Alright, so let's go ahead and put these special moves on screen real quick. And alright, there we go, once again through the magic of editing. Now before we break down these special moves, I want to state that none of them are safe on block unless you meter burn and some of them are actually plus on block, but just keep in mind none of these are safe if your opponent blocks them. First on our list we have Turtling, which is honestly a fairly complex move. During Turtling, your character will absorb incoming projectiles, and Meter Burn in this move allows you to absorb any kind of attack, which is great for countering all kinds of pressure. However, it doesn't work on jump ins. And keep in mind you can also backdash and forward dash out of this move. And next up we have Shredded. This attack is great for ending combos, especially if the opponent's on the ground, and even if they do block this move, you can meter burn it to make it safe. Now it's not plus, but it is safe. In fact, if you meter burn it, it ends with an overhead, so it's a bit sneaky there, it's double hitting overhead. If they're trying to crouch, this will catch them. That's going to be great for the first week of the game, right? I mean, eventually the opponent will learn that's a mix-up, right? They'll learn it eventually. But for now, it's a very good mix-up in your arsenal. And next up, we have Boshi Slice. This attack is a great anti-air, and it hits mid as well. And if we meter burn it, what happens? Let's go ahead and see, I'm curious. Oh, if you meter burn it, a second turtle comes in. I bet we can extend that too. Ooh, so that's my extender, huh? Let's go ahead and try this. There we go, yeah. So 4 2 1 is a great way to extend that combo after landing this hit. So it's a great way to extend combos, and it's a good anti air as well. Just an all around good move in general. Very unsafe on block, though, so be careful with that. However, if you meter burn it, it's actually plus on block. So not only safe, but plus on block if you meter burn it. Very important to keep in mind. And next up, we have Shellicopter. Pretty good damage, also a decent way to end combos as well. I don't think it does quite as much damage as Shredded, although very close, and it's one hit. So it's a great way to end longer combos, because only one hit means less damage scaling. So very good in that regard. And if we meter burn it, oh, throw the opponent for good damage, and it switches sides. However, if I hold forward, it won't switch sides, so check this out. I can actually choose which way I throw them. By default, it throws them backwards. However, if I hold forward, it will throw them the way I'm already facing, which is good if they're in the corner. You don't want to let them escape the corner with this move. So the meter burn version is great for extra damage, and you can choose to keep them in the corner if you want to. And of course, if you're in the corner, then do the default version, because that way, now they're in the corner. Very good stuff. And next up, we have Bombshell. A somewhat slow overhead attack, but a great mix-up tool nonetheless, because it can cross up. Look at that craziness. And I can actually control its trajectory, so if I hold back during, it's closer, it lands in front. By default, it'll cross up at certain distances, or whiff entirely. And if I hold forward, it goes further. Ooh, that's some pretty good range. Let's test that. How good is that? Oh, okay, so not quite that far. About here. Ooh, good stuff. The point is, you can hit the opponent. Ooh, got the cross up, right? 2-1, cross up. Or 2-1, stay in the front. Oh, really dirty stuff. Very dirty, especially if they're blocking. I know right now it's comboing, but it's a great, great mix-up tool. Now, they could anti-air it. If they're crouching, they could down to it on reaction, but that's going to be pretty tough to do, I can guarantee you. Especially in the first couple of weeks, that's going to be hard to anti air That's a pretty tricky move. And what happens if we meter burn it? Ooh, we get a ground bounce. Look at that. Ooh, can I cross up and do the bounce? Oh my god, and we've switched sides. That's fantastic. I can be in the corner and switch sides? Fantastic stuff. Let's do a quick combo real quick. You don't recover right away, so you can't do a wall bounce, but you can get an attack string off and do a special move. That's very cool. And that's a lot of damage too, so this might be your best way to extend combos most of the time. Now, not for every turtle. Some turtles may have better combo extenders, 
but that's really good damage for a single hit. That's scary stuff. Very good way to extend your combos, as long as you're within range, but then again, has multiple versions, so even if you're far away, you're still getting that combo. What a good move. What a good, solid, special move. Nice stuff. However, it does have one very big downside. It's very unsafe on block. Even the meter burn version is still very unsafe on block. So if the opponent does block your cross up, or if they do just block the overhead when you land in front, it's combo city for them. They're going to hit you with a full combo. It's very, very unsafe. So it's not without its own share of risk, but it's great for extending combos and a great mix-up tool. And last but not least, we have Krang Tang, which can only be done in the air, but look at that, a bunch of overheads. So it's great for ending a short air combo. Let's go ahead and try that. Hmm, maybe not jumping three. Jumping three is a bit rough for some reason, but jumping two right there, great for canceling. What about? Okay, so you can cancel jumping three. It's just a bit tougher to do, but it's a great way to end short air combos if you're not quite as combo savvy, but it's also a great mix up in general. Do the overhead, then do a second overhead. Oh, that's dirty stuff. Good luck blocking that. I could go low after instead, right? I could go for a low. Maybe I don't have any low mix-ups to threaten the opponent with, but if I did, that would be a great mix-up. However, more importantly, it's actually great for punishing projectiles. So if I'm this far away, I could just jump over the projectile, or I could jump and punish. So it's very good for that. And let's meter burn it. Yep, the meter burn does more damage and puts the opponent much further away, so that's pretty good. Now, it's not very much damage, so it's not worth spending the meter most of the time, but I think it's worth it if it wins the match. Alright, that's it for his special moves, let's move on to his attack strings. Alright, so first up we have Hellacious. Has a low mix-up right in the middle, and it's safe on block as well. Now, can I cancel after it? Yes, I can, but that does not quite reach, so I'm gonna have to do the turtle spin. There we go, so that combos. Now, I can probably do um, a meter burn wall bounce? No, that will not reach. What about if I do overhead? Nope, not fast enough. So not the best for starting combos if you finish it, however, the first two hits are great for extending combos as we saw earlier, so... Boom, right there. Great for starting off combos with the first two hits, and the first two hits are actually more safe than if you finish it. Next up, we have Big Apple 3AM. That's oddly specific. Ooh, so two mids right off the bat and great range, so the opponent cannot duck under these. They are mids, and the last hit is an overhead. Good stuff, and a hard knockdown to an extent. A bit of a splat, so I can dash in and keep the pressure going if I hit. So I can run in, keep my pressure going. Good stuff, I like that. I like that a lot. I could even go for a cheap turtle trick, couldn't I? There we go. Oh, that's a dirty mix-up I could do. Good stuff. Does it combo? Is there enough hit, hit stun to actually combo? There is. Good stuff. I can combo if I wanted to. And it's a great cross-up. All around good stuff. Next up, we have Righteous. Ooh, ends in a low. Good stuff. Once again, two mids. Great for lockdown and ends in a low. Good stuff. Now, here's a great example of the turtle mix-up. So, it ends in a low. If the opponent knows that, or if I do it enough and I train them to block low, I can now do that overhead, so I can go, nah, overhead. And that overhead is much scarier because full combo, right? Very, very scary stuff. Great mix up right away. Awesome. And then we have family values. Does this launch? Oh, it's an overhead, so it's a built-in 50-50. Now, can I combo after that? I can do a special move. What about if I wanted to do the turtle move? Oh, it's at the top of my fingers. Okay, I could do that. Can I meter burn it? Okay, I can do a meter burn wall bounce, cost two bars, but a great way to start off combos after an overhead. That's not bad. Built-in mix-up. So the low will not start a combo, but it's a great scary tool. Great for scaring the person into blocking low. Then you go for the overhead and start off your combo. Good stuff. Next we have Slice and Dice. Okay, so three mid attacks. Not bad. That's fine. Does it end combos? Can I cancel it? No, I cannot cancel it. So it's not good for that, but it scoots forward, which is good. It walks forward. And it's a good pressure tool. It's all mids. They can't avoid it. That's good. And last but not least, we have Watch It Fool. Overhead, mid, and then low. Very tough to block. And once again, here's the turtle mix-up. Oh, that's the overhead instead. And the overhead will lead to a full combo if I meter burn it. So very, very scary stuff. We have the low, and then we have the overhead for the mix-up. Great stuff. And pretty good range, too. And you may have noticed I end my combo with this string most of the time, too. Or at least the first two hits. I do 4, 2, 1, then a special move. And that's mainly because it scoots you forward, so it's great for ending the combo. Alright, that is it for his attack strings. Let's move on to his character trait next. Alright, so if I press circle by itself, I get Donatello. And that's an overhead that is also plus one on block, and it starts off combos. Very good for that. Can I get a back three? Yes, I can. Back three and a full combo. Very good stuff, Donatello. I love you. You're great for extending combos, and you're safe on block. You're actually plus one, so if they block it, I can go for a mix-up. 
Can I combo into it? Oh my god, it did. Oh, I get a combo starter? Oh, thank you so much, Donatello. You're amazing. You are just great for that. Oh my gosh. So it's plus on block, great for extending combos, and it's a mix-up too. Now the downside is it recharges very slowly compared to the rest. If I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure the Watchtower said it recharges the slowest. But it's still a very, very good tool. Now what if I press forward and the trade button? What happens then? Oh, we get Raphael with the two projectiles and it recharges very quick. So I always have access to two very quick projectiles with Raphael. Yes, they are both high, so the opponent could always duck under these. But they're still a great fast projectile and decent damage too. And I guess I could combo into them if I wanted to. And keep in mind these projectiles are safe on block, but just barely. They're minus 5. And last but not least we have Michelangelo. If I hold back and press the trait button, boom, we have a fast hitting low attack from Michelangelo. Lots of recovery on that, so it's a built in low mix up and I can't combo after it. Hmm. That's still good though because it's full screen I believe and it's fast. So let's go ahead and do that. Nope, not full screen. I was mistaken. So it's not full screen, but still pretty good range. And it does still recharge faster than Donatello. A lot faster, in fact. So it's still good for that reason. So if I was doing a string like this, that ends with an overhead, and I wanted to scare the opponent with a low, I could call in Michelangelo. And let's go ahead and talk about the super as well, because the way it starts is different for every character. So for Leonardo, he's going to start the super off differently than other characters. He actually runs across the screen just like Robin, and then the combo starts. Now the combo itself, I'm pretty sure, is the same for every character, or the super itself, right? Same damage, but the way it starts off is different, and it's very unsafe for Leonardo. I'm not sure if other characters make it safe or not, but Leonardo's is minus 30 if they block it, so you gotta be careful with that. And look at the long startup too, right? He runs in from full screen, so it's not gonna whiff punish at all, but it is very good for ending combos if the opponent's close enough. And who knows, maybe you could armor through a really slow attack from full screen, but I don't recommend it most of the time. Alright everyone, that's it for Leonardo. Let's go ahead and move on to the next turtle. Alright, so next up we have Donatello, and you may have noticed only two special moves on screen. That's because these special moves are unique to Donatello, and the rest are all universal. Alright, so first off we have Spinning Splinters. This attack is very unsafe on block, but very good damage. Look how far away it puts the opponent, and it's a great way to end combos too. Look at that damage, ooh. Can you imagine a combo with this thing ended? Oh, there we go, okay. Good for ending combos, good damage. Very good in the corner too because I'm close and I can move before they can. So that's good stuff. Now if we meter burn it, what happens? So with the turtles, I've noticed I have to mash. I can't just hold down the button. I have to hold it down like in the middle after the first couple of hits. There we go. And that's actually a combo starter. Can I back three? Yes, I can. I can back three and I can end with it. Yes, I can. Okay, it dropped, it dropped. So not the best way to end the combo. Maybe do a Shellicopter instead because that was a bit of a risk. But still, very good damage. And if I meter burn it, I get a launcher. Now once again, every version is unsafe on block, so it's not like Leonardo. You can't just end block strings with this. It's very risky. Next up, we have Pokey Doki. This attack is actually for anti-air, so if I down two, I can cancel into it. Whoop. Boom. It's unblockable too, by the way. It's like a command grab. So if they're in the air, you can catch them with this, and boom, pretty good damage, and it switches sides too, so another example, boink, good range on that, wow. So if they're even that high in the air, you can catch them and snag them onto the ground. Great for opponents who want to air dash over you, good for that too. Much better than his down too, a lot faster, good stuff. And it's unblockable, nice. Now what if I meter burn it, what happens then? Oh, also a combo starter, good stuff. So if they jump and I catch them with this, I get a combo starter. And it's a back three combo starter. Good stuff. Holding it down, Donatello. Holding it down. So from what I can gather, he's got a really good defensive option if they jump. But on the ground, he's got to rely on his mix-ups because this move will not keep him safe. But it's a great way to start off combos and it's damaging. A lot of damage coming for Donatello. You wouldn't think so because he's a smart turtle, but I'm seeing lots of damage so far. Let's go ahead and move on to his attack strings next. Now once again, I've removed the universal stuff, so any attack strings that other turtles share, I've taken off the list. All these attack strings are actually unique to Donatello, or at the very least change when you pick Donatello. So first off, we have Bon Appetit. A low and then an overhead, and a pretty hard knockdown too. You can't set things up, but you can get a bit of a breather, right? A bit of a time to think about what you want to do next. It's a good mix-up, but it is unsafe on block. And also, has pretty good range too, look at that range. And it combos. Oh baby, look at that. Oh, combo starter. Good stuff. You could also do the turtle hop, I bet. Yep, totally could. So it's good for that too. A very far reaching low that leads to a full combo, or if you want to keep it simple, finish the string for an overhead mix up. Good stuff. 
And next up we have Boss Nova. Very similar to Leonardo's, only it launches in a different way. It does not have an overhead, but it does launch the opponent a bit higher. Can I back three? No, I cannot back three, but it's a free combo starter. That's good. How can I reach them? Forward two? Yeah, forward two will reach. Otherwise, you're going to have some trouble, but forward two does reach. So that's pretty good. No mix-up, but a free combo starter. And next up, we have Scrambled. Ooh, really good range, too. All right, a high and then two mids. It's also safe on block as well. It's the only attack string on this list that is actually safe. So it's a move with great range, and it's safe on block as well. So it's a great tool in the neutral. And last but not least, we have, uh, Mega? So it starts off overhead, and then ends with a low. Can I combo after that? No, I cannot. What about special cancel? Yes, I can special cancel it. Good stuff. And because the last hits a low, you know what that means. Turtle time! Turtle mix-up! Good stuff. So in case you haven't realized it by now, Donatello's main strength is his mix-up game and his range. However, he does pay for it because these mix-ups are not safe on block. And he can't actually save himself by meter burning his special moves either. So that's a pretty big deal as well. So while he does have great range and good mix-ups, the opponent can punish you if they guess correctly. So make sure to always keep mixing things up with Donatello. Or play it safe with the scrambled attack string, right? That's always safe. Get your first two hits, then do a meter burn special move to extend the combo. Okay, so let's move on to his trait. Donatello's trait is actually very, very good, and it's one of the best aspects about him outside of the mix-up game. Okay, so his trait has three different versions, and every version has three different distances. So for example, if I press the trait button, he drops it straight in front of him. If I press the trait button and then hold back afterwards, he throws it closer. If I press the trait button and then hold forward, he throws it further. If I do back in the trait button and hold back, it's close. If I just press back trait by itself, it's neutral. If I press back trait and hold forward, it's far. It's a bit tricky to do with your fingers, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and break down every version. So by default, this move actually absorbs projectiles and throws them back. That's what this one actually does, and that's pretty good if you want to counter zoning, or if you want to play some keep away yourself and make them jump in on you, you can anti-air them, right? If a character is great at projectiles like Firestorm, or maybe Deadshot, and you throw this bad boy down, they're forced to come in, so they jump, Catch him with the anti-air, meter burn it, start a combo, very good stuff. Now the next version is by far the most interesting in my opinion, and also the most useful. If you press back and trait, it's unblockable and the opponent can't actually jump for a short period of time. And it doesn't really matter what distance you do for this one because it hits full screen and it's unblockable. Now they can jump to avoid it, right? But if they jump forward, boom, anti-air him. And then meter burn for a full combo. So it's very good for making the opponent jump, not to mention it's free damage too. Even if they don't want to jump, maybe they like being on the ground, but it's still free damage from full screen. Good stuff. And last but not least, if you press forward and trait, you get a vacuum move that actually pulls the opponent in. This can be great for your mix-ups, right? Knock them down, they get pulled in a bit closer. Okay, so it only sucks in if they're on their feet. If they're on the ground, it will not actually vacuum them in. That's a bit unfortunate, but it's still great for keeping the opponent close, because that's where your mix-ups are, right? If you got a great mix-up game and you're just unpredictable, that's a really good option. Use the vacuum, Pull them in close and keep mixing them up. Very good for that. And of course, last but not least, we have the super. So let's see how Donatello starts it off. Okay, a very quick strike with very limited range, but it's very fast. And is it safe or not? I didn't even check. Let's go ahead and check if it's safe real quick. It is not. It's still very unsafe, but it's very quick. So if I wanted to launch the opponent, I could just go into it. So not very good range. However, it's very fast, so it's perfect for comboing into. Pretty good damage. Very short range, but it's fast enough to combo into with relative ease, and it's got pretty decent range. It's not as good as Leonardo's, but it's still pretty good. Alright everyone, that's it for Donatello, so let's move on to the next turtle. And next up we have Michelangelo. This turtle is actually my favorite from the cartoon show, but in this game he's probably my second favorite. Anyway, let's break down his special moves first. First up we have Hot Nunchuck Fury. A bunch of mid attacks, but very unsafe on block. Once again, only Leonardo has the benefit of being safe on block. Now if you meter burn it, you get a combo starter. So that's pretty good. Now I've noticed a trend, so these turtles, you gotta enhance like after the third hit or so. You can't do it right away, you can't hold down from the get-go. Wait till later in the combo and then extend. Can I jump to extend the combo here? I'm actually curious. Yes I can. I can actually jump to extend the combo, so that's pretty cool. And next up we have Shell Mill. This attack actually hits low on the opponent a few times, and if you meter burn it, it launches them for a combo, and it's safe on block as well, it's plus one. So it's actually advantageous on block, not just safe. 
so that's pretty good. If you want to spin the bar, it's actually safe on block. Not to mention it has three different distances, so if I hold back, he stays in place, or at least close to where he was. By default, he travels a bit further forward, and if I hold down forward, he goes much further, a little over half screen. Alright, that is it for the special moves, let's move on to the attack strings. First off, we have Party Dude. A great flurry of mid attacks that are also safe on block, but just barely, it's minus 6. So the opponent can't punish you, but they have a great advantage on block after this, right? They're gonna be able to attack you and you're forced to block what they do. So it's not the best move, but it has some good range, so that's good. And the opponent can't actually duck under this, they're forced to take it. Which means they're forced to take a mix-up, right? You could go for the turtle. So that's always good. You're not forced to take their pressure afterwards. You could go for the mix-up, but if they block that mix-up, you're in a lot of trouble. So it's a bit of a 50-50. It's a catch-22. And next up, we have Booyah Bash. Now, unlike Donatello's and Leonardo's, it does not start off combos, but it does do really good damage and put the opponent at full screen, which you don't normally want with Michelangelo, but if they're in the corner, that's very good, or if they're near the corner, it's still good because you pushed them a little bit closer to the corner where they don't want to be. So it is good in that regard, not to mention it's plus 6 on block. And next up, we have Most Excellent. This attack has a sneaky overhead in the middle, which is a big deal, but it becomes even better once you realize you can cancel into his low hitting special move. Which means you have an overhead and then a low right away, and that low can actually start a combo if you meter burn it. So it's a very good mix up game. However, since it has that mix up, this string is actually not safe on block like Donatello's is. It's actually a bit risky if you do it. In fact, if you want to be really sneaky, don't even do the overhead. Just do back 2-2 two, two, and then go straight into the low. So instead of mid-mid overhead low, they just get mid-mid-low, and then it's a combo starter. Once again, spin the bar, and you started a combo. Just a great mix-up string in general, but also unsafe on block. So once again, a catch-22. And last but not least, we have Major League Butt Kicking. Overhead, mid, then low. However, from what I can tell, you can't combo after it. Which is a bit of a shame, but you could do overhead into low, and that's still a good mix-up. In fact, you could do overhead-overhead, and that's still a good mix-up. Which is very typical of Michelangelo's playstyle. He doesn't have the range of Donatello, so his mix-ups are actually even more unsafe, but they're also much tougher to block, and they lead to full combos if they hit. So that's a pretty good trade-off, right? He has the overhead which can lead to a full combo, or he has the lows that can also lead to a full combo, but if the opponent guesses right and blocks that mix-up, it's their turn to combo you. So it's a very high-risk, high-reward kind of playstyle with Michelangelo. Anyway, let's move on to his trait. Now this trait is a bit complicated, so please try to stay with me. So by default, Michelangelo is on his skateboard, and if you hold down back, he goes a bit slower. If you hold forward, he goes faster. Just a little bit though, it's not a huge difference, but he does go slower or faster if you hold down a direction. But what can you do when you ride the skateboard? Well, so first off, if you press down, you'll cancel it. So that could be good for mix-ups, you cancel into it, then hop off it right away. They may have been waiting for a skateboard mix-up, but instead you hopped off it and reset the neutral. However, if I press 1 while on the skateboard, I do a kickflip right into their face. Pretty decent damage, and it's a mid so they can't crouch under it, and it's plus one on block, so I'm actually at advantage if I hit with this. Can I combo after it? I don't think so, but it's very advantageous, and if it hits them, I have all day to start off a mix-up, right? I have all day to do something, because they're putting hits done for a long time, and I can go for a mix-up. Even if they block it, I'm still at plus one, so it's a great offensive tool. How far is the range on that? I think it might be full screen. Yep, it's a full screen projectile, pretty good stuff. So if the opponent's trying to play keep away and they're throwing a bunch of projectiles, you can just throw this out there and hit them with it. It recharges very quickly, it's one of the fastest recharging traits of all the turtles, so it's great in that regard. So that's what happens if I press 1, but what if I press 2 on the skateboard? Boom! Huge overhead, great for starting off combos. Oh, look at that. I have all day for a wall bounce, I bet, let's see. Yep, I can do a back 3 and then it's combo city. Very good stuff. Ooh, that back 4 too is very long on whiff recovery, and it's not very fast on startup either. So not the best way to end your combos with Michelangelo. I want to keep that in mind when I play online. I'm going to want to do the turtle flip instead, the, the shellicopter. It's going to be a much better option. Anyway, I digress. You can also control the range of this move as well. If I hold back and press 2, I get a close version. If I hold forward and press 2, it goes much further. Ooh, almost full screen, at least half screen. How far is that? Oh my god, great distance. About two-thirds of the screen. Very good stuff. A great far-reaching overhead, and he hops off the ground too, so I bet it dodges low attacks as well. However, it's unsafe on block, so be careful when using it. Every version is minus eight. Now what if I press three? 
Ooh, I get a low attack, and does that combo? Yes, it does. Can I do a wall bounce? Yes, I can. I can do a wall bounce. Very good stuff. So this skateboard is a straight up 50-50. We have an overhead or a low, both of which lead to full combos. Now, the overhead is a bit easier to see coming. You may be able to react to it offline at a tournament, but online, I don't think very many players are going to be able to react to this. Very good stuff. Can I combo into it? No. What about the low? Yes, the low, in fact, does combo, but the overhead does not. Very important to keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the super. How does this super start off? Okay, once again, a very fast attack. Is that an overhead? Nope, it's a mid. So the opponent can't duck under it, but it's not a mix-up. Eh, so its range is the worst we've seen so far, but it's very fast and easy to combo into. So it's still useful. All right, everyone, that is it for Michelangelo. So let's move on to the last turtle. All right, and last but not least, we have Raphael. The first special move actually enhances his trade attack, while the second is actually a parry. So neither one of these special moves will actually attack the opponent, which I find a bit interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and break down these moves in more detail. Let's begin with the parry, since it's much easier to explain. This attack is your standard counter move. If the opponent attacks Raphael during the animation, he does the counter attack. Now it's not a very huge window, I'm having a tough time timing it here. But there you go. Does a bit of damage and knocks the opponent away for some good breathing room so you can start off your mix-ups or start attacking the opponent making your approach. And the meter burn version does more damage to the opponent. Quite a lot actually, and it knocks them a bit further away. So it's good for that. That's some pretty good damage for a parry, it's pretty good. Now the next special move is a bit more complicated. Getting hype actually enhances your trait, and every time you do it, your trait gets a bit more damaging. So it's a lot like Catwoman's trait from Injustice 1, right? If I press the trait button, I get a full combo. And the less time you get hype, the shorter your trait combo is. However, I can actually meter burn getting hype, and I'll build two sides at a time instead of just one. Or I can meter burn the trait combo itself to extend the combo manually with a wall bounce. However, this only becomes possible if you have stored three sides or more. So you can't meter burn to extend your combo if you're at level 2 or lower. You just get some good damage, and it's still a great way to end your combo to be fair. But if you have three sides or more, you can now meter burn and extend your combo manually. So check it out, I'm gonna do my combo and then hold down the meter burn button and then go for a wall bounce. And I dropped it, but you get the idea. It's great for extending combos if you have some meter lying around. And like I mentioned earlier, this meter burn combo trick actually works for level three and higher. So if you have three, four, or five sides, you can meter burn during those third, fourth, or fifth hits to extend the combo manually for some extra damage. And now real quick before we move on, I wanna show what all of these levels look like. So here's level one. Decent damage and a great way to end off combos. Here's level two. More damage in level one and leaves the opponent a bit closer for a mix up. It's honestly the perfect range for Raphael. It's right where he wants to be. Now let's check out level three. And I'm not gonna meter burn it this time so you can see the full thing. Knocks the opponent a bit further back so you could try to do an air shell attack for an overhead to punish some projectiles, maybe punish a wake up attack, or if you just want some breathing room, it's a pretty good way to end your combo. Let's look at level 4. Level 4 does more damage and leaves the opponent at more or less the same distance as level 3. And if you do choose to meter burn it, you're actually much closer to the opponent, however from what I can tell they fall much faster, so you don't have time for the wall bounce if you want to extend the combo. You have to use an attack string instead. The wall bounce seems too slow to extend the combo after a level 4. And last but not least, here's level 5 trait combo. It does the most damage and also leaves the opponent on the same side, which is good if you have them cornered because level 4, 5, and 3 will switch sides, which means you've actually given the opponent a free way out of the corner. But what happens if you meter burn it? Let's find out. Lots of time to extend the combo. More than enough time for a wall bounce in fact, so it's very similar to his level 3 combo extender, only with more damage beforehand, so it's a very, very good option. I think level 3 and level 5 are exactly where you want to be if you choose to spend your meter. Alright, let's move on to his attack strings. First up, we have try this on for size. That's a good pun, I like that. This attack is actually very tough for the opponent to block. Not only does it have two overheads, but it actually still switches sides even on block. So the opponent has to block an overhead, then a switch, and then a second overhead. That's very, very tricky stuff. Now unfortunately, Raphael does not have his own way to extend combos, right? So you gotta do his turtle drop if you wanna actually extend the combo. And of course, this string is unsafe on block. 
It obviously has to be, it has far too many mix-ups to be safe. Next up we have Swiss Cheese. Great for ending combos and good for mix-ups too, but only if you cancel into the turtle drop yourself. Otherwise it's all mid so the opponent can't duck under it, and it's unsafe on block so you definitely want to go for that mix-up, unless of course you're ending combos with it. Next up we have Bitchin'. Great range and ends with an overhead, very good stuff and the opponent's on the ground for a long time. So you could go for a cross up, go for the turtle drop setup, all sorts of good stuff. The opponent's forced to block your mix up, very good knockdown, and it has good range as well. Now unfortunately, unsafe on block, but look at that range, very reminiscent of Molina. Very good move. And last but not least, we have Class in Pain 101. Overhead, then a mid, and then two lows, very sneaky stuff, and you could cancel those and do an overhead. So you have two lows and then an overhead, or just go straight into overhead. A great mix up either way, and the overhead combos, and in fact the lows do too. So here we have a true 50-50, both of which lead to full combos if you meter burn the special move. Very sneaky stuff here, and definitely one of the best things about Raphael. And we've actually already covered his trait, so let's go ahead and move on to his super. What's the range on this? Oh, it's actually a flurry of attacks. How long does that last for? Uh, uh, uh. So it's three hits, alright. So it's a combo super, that's pretty sweet. Okay, they're all three mids, no mix up in there, but still a very flashy way to start off your super combo. Awesome stuff. So Raphael is actually the toughest character to explain. He's not really a mix up character like Michelangelo, and he doesn't have the range like Donatello, but what does make him good is his ability to drop his combos early and build some meter. So you could do this, boom, 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 and get hype, and now your trait does a ton of damage. So that's your main plan with Raphael. You want to do a long combo, but instead of finishing with a special move, cancel into his Hype Builder. That way your trait does more damage later on. And then use your trait and combos for big damage that don't cost any meter. And he also has a counter as well, which is a great option against aggressive players. If they try to attack you too much, you can parry them, which is always a great defensive option. Whew, alright everyone, that covers every single turtle. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below. And while you're down there, please post a comment too and tell me what you think. Who's your favorite Ninja Turtle and why? And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell. That way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time and as always, stay underdogs!